When you move from stressful situation to stressful situation, always teetering on the edge of disaster, you become worn down on all levels. You may feel as though you're always just one decision, one paycheck, one wrong move away from disaster. You may have even started living your life in a constant state of worry, always wondering, what if? What if I get sick, my partner, my kids, or someone else that I care about? Or what if some other horrible thing happens? How will I live, pay the bills, cope? As your anxiety levels skyrocket, your ability to feel confident about yourself and your life will plummet. And there you are, teetering on the edge of disaster, just waiting for something to go wrong. Welcome, everyone. It's Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer, here with you on Angel Heart Radio And if you're ready for something to go right instead of wrong, and if you want to feel balanced instead of stressed out, stay with me. Because when we come back, we're going to uncover the simplest way to step back into a life of harmonious balance. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools for transformation, positivity, joy and hope. They should not be used to replace your legal or medical advice. Welcome to Angel Heart Radio where we celebrate you. We celebrate your divine connection. We celebrate your magnificence. We celebrate you as a beautiful being here on planet Earth sharing your love and your light. We are so blessed to have amazing hosts here on Angel Heart Radio. We fan your seeds of hope and we help you to plant more. Angelheartradio.com is our station and angellight777.com is our big sister. All the links, the series, host information, how to visit us and really how to receive the best from Angel Heart Radio and a whole lot more besides. Thank you for choosing to be with us on Angel Heart Radio. We're so grateful to share with you. Powered by love, Angel Heart Radio is brought to you by angellight777.com. And we're back and we have a caller. The caller, I'm going to ask you to hold on for just a minute because we want to help you get into balance. But before we do that, let me just explain what we're going to be doing so Even if you're listening, you'll have the opportunity to participate. That's what's really so important about spiritual work. When you are listening to someone help another person or share a tool or a technique with them, you will be best served if you are willing to participate. It is wonderful that you're listening, but the participation is where you're able to get the greatest benefit. It's something, it's kind of like engaging all of your senses. So if you're just listening and not participating, your mind is probably going to wander and you may be left wondering, well, what was that? How was that beneficial? But if you're willing to participate, you'll be actively involved and then you'll get the benefit of the angelic assistance that comes through. So let's just look at the fact that where we are as a society, we have moved from horse and buggy to an extremely fast-paced society, and it has become normal for us to make decisions on the fly. We've got an awful lot of information to sift through, and yet we're, we have been given the ability to act so, so quickly to act and react quickly. And really, we've gotten in the habit of now never giving ourselves time to stop and think. It is producing for us a state of anxiety, especially when we suddenly are coming up against a challenge issue. 
if we're used to just run, 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 make decisions really, really quickly, and then we have a challenge issue enter our lives, and it's unique to every person. It's not always illness. That was just an example that I gave. When that challenge issue arrives, we could be really stuck if we don't know how to stop, take a breath, and give ourselves a minute to sift or longer, as long as you need, to sift through the information. We've become a motion-dependent society. We've gained the ability to do more, but we still have to be mindful of the direction that we are heading Otherwise, we're going to head right into chaos. Now, if you feel as though your life is just kind of teetering on the brink of disaster, it could be because you're outrunning your ability to make quality, good decisions. If we don't check in with our higher higher guidance, we can careen off in unhealthy directions Or we can even choose to hide away, afraid to move in any direction. So the two extremes, neither one of them is really going to give you a happy life. The balanced state allows you to move in whatever direction is best for that moment. Instead of being so far off one way or to the, uh, the other that it takes you so long to come back to the middle. Our goal then today is to help everyone get back into a place where you are living in a state of harmonious balance. So what do you do? You need to make a decision. You got to move in one direction or another, and you really are confused. You don't know what direction is going to serve your highest good. Well, first of all, Just the fact that you're in a state of confusion should be an indicator to you that you have stepped out of balance. Please, no judgment. Do not immediately start blaming and shaming yourself for being out of balance. Instead, congratulations. Look at me. I was able to realize that I've stepped out of balance, that I may be trying to make this decision from a place of, uncertainty or confusion. So I'm going to do what's necessary to get back into balance, to align with my highest good so I can make the best decision possible with the information that I have available. Now, the first thing you're going to do is stop and bring yourself back from wherever you've landed with your thoughts. Back from the future, back from the past, or even that alternative reality that you may be creating as a way to escape. You got to come back into this moment and become fully present. And do so with as many senses as you possibly can so that you are anchoring yourself into this moment. Anxiety happens when we obsess about the future. It's a possible future, but it may never happen. So you are wasting your valuable time and energy worrying about a what if. Depression happens when we chain ourselves to the past. We are constantly reviewing the past and wishing that we could do do it over or Relive those days because they were so wonderful. Whatever it is, you cannot go back to where you were. You can only access yourself from where you are this moment. The only safe space that is available to you in your life is the present moment. Now, let's unpack that for a minute. What does that mean? How can the present be safe because the only thing, the only time when you know for sure what is happening is in this present moment. Otherwise, you're anxious because you're in the future or depressed 
because you're in the past or you've checked out altogether and you're in an alternative reality. Desperation says, I'm stuck. Something bad will happen if I don't decide this minute. No, it won't. That is you projecting into the situation. That is you thinking ahead or going back and saying, look, this bad thing happened the last time I didn't make a decision, so I'm sure this bad thing is going to come right now. When you are balanced, you say, I can take my time and connect with my guidance. Everything always works out for my highest good. And from that place of faith and trust, from that place of alignment, you can see if you are standing in your own way, do the work you need to do to clear and heal it so that you can actively participate in your well-being with the help of your guides, the divine, whomever you want to interact with, as long as they're beings of 100% pure white light. Please don't waste your time worrying about dark energies. Align with the angels. They are a much stronger, higher power, and they will help you raise your vibration. When you've raised your vibration, you don't have to worry about the dark energies. Nothing can hurt or harm you because you're not vibrating in the same place, physical place, vibrational place, excuse me, that they are vibrating so you can't even interact. So, please also understand that the divine do not play childish games with you. If it is meant for you, if it's for your highest good, you will be able to move toward it at the pace that feels good to you. If you feel pushed, rushed, uncomfortable, it can be that you are resisting growth or it can be that it's not for your highest good. That's when you need to be a detective. Start picking this apart. Why am I feeling Anxious about this? Is it because it's asking me to be bigger than I am currently? Or does this make me feel belittled, small, defeated, desperate? Well, if it's making you feel desperate, it's not a good decision for you. You have stepped out of balance. You are not shining your brightest. You're not in alignment. You're not receiving truth. You're receiving ego, perhaps if you're receiving anything at all. And you're right to feel anxious about this because it it will not resolve in your favor. It's not something that you do want to encounter. So let's remember, get back in the present. You can trust the divine not to play games and not to offer you contradictions. It will not be, hey, we want to give you this present today, and then you wake up tomorrow and, oh, Only kidding, it's not available anymore. No, that's not the way the divine operates. That's the way the ego or people that you may encounter in the physical realm believe they can operate, but they're not operating in their as their highest self. So you get into your high place of love, joy, and peace, and you will attract people that are willing to help you and support you and guide you toward your goals. Just let go of the dark unless you are focusing on it to clear it and then move through the clearing and the healing process as quickly as possible. And as always, I'm going to advise that you do it through the heart space. To me, it is the most fabulous way that you can achieve calm, centered balance. And with it comes incredible wisdom. So let's go to our caller, 703. Thank you so much for letting me explain so that everybody can be on the same page with you. 
what's going on in your life and how can I help you get back into balance? Well, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Andrea, and I'm calling about um, a relationship. I'm not really okay. sure wh- wh- where it's going, but um, his name is Brandon, and we we started talking a couple weeks ago, but I haven't heard from him a week because I think he's in Texas because his grandfather was in hospice care, so I'm not sure if he's back from his, I guess, his trip, but I don't know what kind of energy you may pick up with with him and I or... Okay, so let's take this back to its most basic level. Sure. We understand that everything in life is a relationship. It doesn't matter whether it's a partnership, a business agreement, something with par- parental or children. Everything in our life is a relationship. Oh, of course. But the only one that you have any control over is you. Is me. <laughs> so... <laughs> when I was first looking at all of this, I was like, okay, who's the jokester? My whole life is one big relationship, and the only thing I can control is me. And I want to fix those other people so badly. So let's look at what's going on with you, because if Brandon is the right person for you, if this relationship is going to feel good to your heart and be serving to both of you, it will happen if you more, it will be more likely to happen if you are coming from a balanced place instead of a place of desperation and fear. So desperation and fear would say something like, oh, I'm really lonely. I really would like to have somebody that really gets me and would uh, a companion and just someone to hang around with or talk with or go have fun with. Now, that has elements of truth in it. But when we come from balance, we've got to learn to say, I am magnificent. I am incredibly fabulous. Look right in the mirror. Wow, Andrea, you're amazing. I'm so delighted with all of the choices that you're making. I'm so absolutely thrilled by the growth that you've chosen to participate in in this lifetime. It would feel really wonderful to have a relationship with someone who was on our vibrational level. But the best way for, t- for us to attract the perfect person is to make sure that we're spending mo- most of our time in that high place of love, joy, and peace. We are feeling fulfilled by who we are so that we're not coming from a place of desperation for a relationship, but we're coming from a place of welcoming. So just taking a spotlight and shining it inside your being right now without judgment. Judgment doesn't belong in any kind of healing work because judgment makes us lie to ourselves. So we just shine a spotlight on the inside and say, Do, am, is every part of me feeling worthy of this relationship with Brandon? Yes. Great. Oh, yay. Now, let's say you said no. Well, then you would simply ask whatever area was not wanting to respond. Oh, you know, no, um, my last relationship didn't go well. Allow that aspect to come out into the light, and then you just love it away. So, We have this relationship with Brandon, but because you feel worthy of it, it's much more likely to be the perfect relationship for you than if you were coming from a place where you said, well, you know, I really make bad decisions with uh, people that I get in relationships with, but I'm hoping that this time I, I chose better. If you're sending that out as your vibration, law of attraction says, oh, we so get it, Andrea. 
And we are happy to provide you exactly what your vibration is asking for. So we're going to send you somebody that's not very dependable, isn't going to honor you in the way that you want to be honored, and, you know, just makes you feel kind of iffy about yourself. So congratulations that you're feeling really good and really worthy about the relationship. Now, the only thing that you have to do is kind of check in with your heart and say, well, in the experiences that I've had to had with Brandon to this up till this point, are the interactions one that fe- ones that feel good to me, or am I starting to get some red flags? So just take a oh, moment. Oh no, no, no red flags. Okay, beautiful. Then all you need to do is say thank you so much, universe, for sending me this incredibly wonderful human being to spend time with. And be as welcoming as you possibly can with your energetic vibration. And by that, I don't mean you throwing out the red carpet and saying, Brandon, I'll do anything for you. No, you just say, I'm so delighted that someone of this caliber found me. And I'm willing to go forward with this as long as it feels good to both of us. I'm just grateful, universe for bringing to me someone who shares my interests, someone who is kind and loving as I am, someone who is honorable as I am. Just going down all of the qualities that you are grateful for. When we stay in a place of gratitude for what they have brought us and out of that place of, gosh, I hope I'm good enough, We keep that vibration high. We give ourselves an opportunity to really say yes to this beautiful banquet the universe has has prepared for you. Because so often the universe rings the doorbell and says, here you go, Andrea. We have got this magnificent feast here for you. All you have to do is open the door, get out of the way, and allow us to bring it in. And we hop into doubt. <gasps> oh, it's everything I wanted. What if I'm not good enough? What if he doesn't like me? What? If... Back into this present moment, it would not arrive if I wasn't ready for it. It would not arrive if I was not a vibrational match for it. All I have to do is get into a place of gratitude and allow this relationship to open and progress in a way that feels good to me, knowing that at any time I can go back into my heart space and take a look at the relationship and make sure that it still feels good. So right now, it feels great. Your only job is to allow it to continue to feel great because you're staying in a place of gratitude and worthiness instead of fear and desperation. So congratulations to you, first of all, for a beautiful high vibration for admitting to yourself I'm worthy of this, and I'm excited to receive it. That took a tremendous amount of spiritual work. So let's just take a minute now. Take a deep breath and acknowledge that. Look at me. I Mm -hmm. did the clearing, the healing, the uplifting, the stretching, the growing that I needed to do in order to be in a place where I could attract a partner that feels good to my heart. Don't get into, oh, will it last, will it not? Just get into the place of love, joy, and peace where you are feeling good. Be grateful for what you have and know that even if this relationship chooses to dissolve because you find that you are not compatible as you spend more time 
together, it just means that you are getting ready for something even bigger. So let me explain what I mean by that because it sounds kind of negative. Oftentimes, not always, but sometimes we form these relationships when we're in space A. And it goes along great when both parties are in space A. But if you are really committed to the spiritual journey, you start growing. Oh, so I I did it backwards. Let's have you in space Z because I want you to go upward. (laughs) I can't, my visualization isn't working if if we're already in A. So you both start at Z and you may have some interest in the spiritual realm or you've got some interests that are similar and you enjoy spending time with each other. And yet one of you really feels committed and connected to the spiritual journey. And it's so important. Nothing else is is as important in your life. And you share that with your partner or whomever you're in a relationship with. And you notice that they're kind of lukewarm about it. Well, you can continue to shine your absolute brightest so that it will be possible for them to see the benefit of connecting more deeply with the divine. But understand that you are not in charge of their journey. The time that even if they choose to hop on the train this lifetime, And that you can't really do anything to change their attitude. It has to come from within, especially if it's a genuine spiritual experience. It's going to come from within. So your only uh, option is to shine your brightest and to grow as gigantically beautiful as you possibly can. Let all of that authentic self that magnificent being that you are, let that shine forth. And that will encourage Brandon or whomever else to also shine brightly because they see how incredibly magnificent your life has become. Or it will give them the opportunity to say, you know, you really make me uncomfortable with all of this talk. And I don't want to continue with the relationship. But when you've grown apart, when somebody has grown in their spiritual journey and the other person has chosen to not grow at this time, you'll find that if you do need to separate, it kind of becomes a fading away. All of the drama leaves the relationship. There's no fighting and nasty. and So you don't have to worry about that as you grow. It's just... I want the highest and best for my life. I want the highest and best for Brandon's life and for anyone whom I'm in a, in a relationship with. And I am comfortable that that means that some people will fall away and be replaced by new people who have already chosen to be at this high vibration. So relationships don't fail, but sometimes They separate because you're no longer in a place where you're connecting well anymore. So let's just take words like failure away and allow it to be a separation, a drifting apart that serves both of your highest good. Oftentimes in relationships, when we do allow the person, instead of trying to pull them with us, and pull and pull and pull and beg and conjole and plead. When we let them go, we may find that they start doing the work on their own because they're no longer able to feed from your table. Suddenly they look down and they say, wow, my table's bare. It's empty. This does not feel good. What do I need to do to be able to sit down at a table of abundance? You're already sitting there, Andrea, and that's beautiful. You want to invite others who can also bring a table of abundance because that creates the most magnificent relationship for you. 
and you can be loving and kind to those who are sitting at empty tables, but you won't be able to maintain a meaningful relationship with them unless they have agreed to to go on the journey. And that is not because anyone is punishing them or hurting them or trying to be mean to them. It is an opportunity for them to grow. Think about our children or ourselves as children. We couldn't wait to get to the next developmental milestone. We wanted to be independent, to do things for ourselves, to show everybody, I can do it. It's the same thing with the spiritual journey. It gets a little confusing when it's an adult situation because we kind of feel responsible for other people and we want them to have this incredible thing that we have. But it's okay. Even if they don't get it in this lifetime, it's okay. That's the journey that they chose for whatever reason. And you may discover the reason or you may not. But you are not hurting them or harming them by saying to them, I love you so much. I'm going to allow you to stand on your own two feet. You don't get to vampire off my energy. You're going to have to connect to your own source. You're going to have to understand that you can sit at your own table of abundance. I'll help you. I will give you unconditional love from my overflow once I'm full. It won't, you won't be able to contain it. Once you're full, it's just going to spill over in every direction. And whomever is willing to receive it is welcome to receive it. And as you grow, you're automatically building these beautiful bridges of love that is the person that you connect with to begin their own journey. So we're never leaving anyone behind because we say no thank you to the vampire. We are simply showing them they themselves are more than enough. As Everyone has within them the ability to grow into their spiritually mature self. We are never on a mission to hurt or harm anyone, including ourselves. But you must put yourself first. You must be filled to overflowing before you'll be able to build bridges of love that will help others. So just take a moment and ask yourself where you may be. Think of yourself maybe as a thermometer. Are you filled with unconditional love at this moment for yourself? Of course, absolutely. Wonderful. Then all you need to do is just continue staying in that beautiful place of connection And know that because you're already full and you are staying aligned with the divine, waves and waves and waves of unconditional unconditional love are going to continue pouring into you and you won't be able to contain it because you're already full. So you're just a walking blessing. And anyone who engages with you can receive that blessing as long as they're willing. So does that help you understand and make you feel a little bit? Oh, good. And do you have another question or another relationship or anything else that's going on? Um, Well, I, I lost my job about a month ago and I've been looking for a new one. I've had several interviews and so far no offers, but um, I don't know. Do you see something maybe hopefully coming through soon? Well, Absolutely, but not because, and let me explain what that means, not because I can see it, but because you have chosen to be in a vibrational space where you are willing to receive it. So let's say you decide, you know, I really feel like 
I need a psychic reading. I need to be able to call someone and, and just ask them, what's my future look like? Well, if they are, uh, <laughs> what's the word? For real, I can't think of the right word. If they're for real, mm. if they're not faking, they'll be able to read your energetic uh, auric field and mm-hmm. see what it is that you are a vibrational match to from this moment right now. So they may say to you, wow, Andrea, I see a fabulous job coming within six months. Now you might say six months. Oh my gosh. I can't no, wait that I long. So. <laughs> so here's what you do. They can only read where you are right now, but you are the driver of your own little free will vehicle. So what you need to do is say, okay, wow, that's a long way off. I'm going to see myself. I'm going to bring that job closer. I am going to spend more time acting as if I am already in that job just to make sure that I don't have any pesky little doubt poking around anywhere. So, I'm going to spend more time in meditation, seeing myself in that job. I'm going to start preparing mentally to be in the job of my dreams. Or I'm going to start doing work in preparation for this job so that when I do get that job, I'll be able to come in with some fresh new ideas that will really start me off on a great foot with my employers. That's the way that you'll be able to change their psychic prediction from six months to maybe six days. Really, no one can tell you a timeline because the time is completely dependent on you. If you get into desperation, it could be six years. If you get into, oh, thank you so much for arranging this perfect job. I am completely without resistance to this wonderful thing coming to me. I'm just, no, I'm in deep gratitude. I'm in complete self-worth and and in alignment with it. I can just relax and say thank you and knowing, know that it will come at the perfect time. So let's take a look at what kind of work or what kind of job feels best to you at, at this moment and make sure that you're lined up with that. So tell us what is your ideal job? What do you love to do more than anything? Oh, well, my passion is sign language, but but that's not going to be my job because um, it's not, it's just not the moment. But so I've been doing some administrative work for the past several years. Okay. So let's completely take away all of the, it's not, it's not, it's not. My passion is sign language. Angels, I would absolutely adore a job in the sign language field. They don't recognize blocks or limitations or you can't. They have an entire universe of possibility that they can serve to you. You're in resistance because someone somewhere told you, hey, Andrea, that's not possible, or you can't make any money at that. So you know what I want you to do? Throw it out the window. Angels, I want the job that is in alignment with my highest good. I love that sign language. It's my passion. I'm also extremely efficient at administrative work. I want to do work that is fulfilling, that is satisfying. And if, no, sorry, I'm doing it too. And I want it to be for my highest good. If that's sign language, hallelujah. If it's not, hallelujah. We are asking them to deliver to you the most exciting, uplifting, 
passion filling soul satisfying work possible because they're not limited they have no restrictions they don't recognize them only we do so perhaps they will deliver to you an administrative job that will take the pressure off you temporarily so that you can relax and just start flowing but I want you to hold on to the ideal in your mind. Angels, thank you. The source, universe, God, however you want to phrase it. Thank you so much for delivering this job so that I don't have to have a concern about paying my bills or staying out of debt or whatever feels good to you. But I haven't forgotten that my dream is to work in the sign language field. One time, oh gosh, I guess it was almost a year ago now, I went to my guides and said, I'm really, really confused. I have heard people say, you have got to be so specific or the universe is going to deliver you something you don't want. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that is so fear-based. But, you know, okay, uh, these maybe this is something that... I just haven't gotten to yet on my journey, but I'm going to ask about it. Then, probably in that same space of time, I was reading something from one of the yogis that said, well, have no expectations. Just be grateful for everything that comes. So I went to my guides and said, okay, now I'm completely confused. This one says I have to be really specific, which honestly wasn't feeling good to me. This one says, have no expectation. So am I supposed to expect anything? Should I get in line with something that I want? Or should I just kind of like throw it up there and ask you to fix it for me? So they came back as always with the most beautiful explanation. And whenever you have questions or you feel that there's confusion, It is always that we are confused. It is never that God is confused or that the universe has suddenly entered into a place of disorder. So their answer that came back to me was the specificity that these people are suggesting that you do is beneficial for the purpose of the mind. Mind loves to have something to think about, pick on, to hash over and over and over again. It loves to latch on to something. And they would rather that you latch on to the positive aspects of whatever it is that you're wanting to manifest than that you be allowed to have some free time to let your mind roam and possibly go out into negative territory where you undo all of the progress that you made with the positive. So they say, absolutely, make a list or create a story or create something. Uh, Sometimes I suggest carrying index cards that you can keep rereading over and over or record something on your phone so that you can just, when you feel that little moment of unease, it's right there reminding you, oh, this is what I want, and this feels good, and this is an alignment with with me. This feels good to every part of me. That keeps your mind busy. It keeps your mind going in the right direction. Then they said, okay, now you need to deal with the part of have no expectation." What they really should be saying is not have no expectation, but instead trust that that which arrives at your doorstep is so much more magnificent than anything you could have envisioned for yourself. So you're over there in your house saying, wow, the most incredible thing I can ever imagine is having a job in the field of sign language. The universe is over in their corner saying, oh, a job for sign language? 
Well, how about putting Andrea in charge of the entire sign language division since she has such great administrative skills? We are afraid to hope for too much. They see your potential and they want to grow you to the place where you can receive everything that they see that you're capable of. So don't get fixated on your outcome. And the way that you fix that is just, wow, I would absolutely love a job in the sign language field. That feels so great to me. So I want this or something even better, whatever is in line with my highest good. Now you are offering no resistance. If a job comes for you in sign language, it will pay you what you need to earn in order to live comfortably. If you need to take an interim job in the administrative field until the sign language job becomes available, that will pop up also. The only thing you need to do is to stay in a place of welcoming and out of resistance. So we don't tell the divine what to do. We tell them what we would like and we leave it up to them to decide what is for our highest good. So do you see the, the difference? We're afraid to hope. Oh, yeah. You know, I and I've caught myself at it <laughs> all the time. My little feel good is so much smaller than what the divine is offering. So Having a list of what would be the ideal job for you is a way to keep the mind busy. But just remember, leave it open-ended so that they can deliver to you what's in line with your magnificence instead of just what you can believe for in this moment. But congratulations to you for being able to believe that everything is possible. Because certainly some of the people that I work with, and this is not condemning anyone, this is just stating a fact, some people are in the place where they can't believe for anything because they've been so hurt, because things have been so difficult. And so in in that particular relationship, my role would be to show them the open door, to hold space for them to step into so they can Take that first tentative step into belief. But you're already in the space of belief, and now you just have to widen it a little more. So the window's open, but there's a door right next to the, it's it's a French door, right next to that window. Open that too. Give them as many doorways into ways in which they can bless you as possible by just being completely out of resistance, deeply rooted and grounded in this present moment and in faith. So if you find yourself getting out into the anxiety of what am I going to do if one of these jobs that I've interviewed for, doesn't call me in the next couple of days, you know that you're out in the future. Get back into the present. Turn it back over to your guides. Say, okay, you know what, guides? You know, I can't handle this right now. I'm not in the headspace that's going to serve me. So I'm going to hand it off to you. They gave me a wonderful little tool that I have been using consistently now for months. When an obsessive thought starts to form or something feels like I'm attaching to it and I don't need to be, they created for me in my mind's eye an escalator. And they just said, okay, here's you've, you've asked us to help you with this obsessive thought or this thing that doesn't seem to want to go away put it on the escalator, and send it up to us. 
Now, since that time, I've made it even more fun, and this is what I want you to do as well. Allow the escalator to look any way that you want it to look. Take the things that you are sending up to them, and it can be people, it can be thoughts, it can be situations. And especially if they are fearful or they're dark in any way, I've started wrapping them up in beautiful gift boxes. So I feel like I'm not sending heaven something I wouldn't want to receive. Instead, I'm sending them a beautiful present and trusting that they know how to transform this. And of course they do. They are without any kind of lack, so they can handle anything. But I like to feel like I am creating beauty or I am working in and and being an effective partner with them. So I try to make it more appealing so that I don't get stuck in a poor me kind of dialogue. Oh, poor me. Look, I can't get rid of this. Or why do I have to deal with this? Or any of those Self-pity things that are so damaging, I'm learning just to pack it off. If I can't get rid of it in a couple of seconds, I hand it over. Oh, look at that. Here's something that doesn't need to be hanging around with me. And then take your spotlight and turn it on and take a look. Have I allowed darkness to come up in this issue? Am I feeling unworthy in this area or that area? Or is there, am I putting a block in the way? Am I resisting? Am I allowing fear to do my thinking for me instead of unconditional love? So if we go back to the example of sign language, it is a perfectly legitimate fear to say, Well, it's easier to get an administrative job than a sign language job because in the reality that most of us live in, that is true. But I'm asking you to step into their reality where there is no lack and no limit and allow them to deliver to you the job that will serve your highest good right now. Well, thank you. You are so welcome. So let's, we're almost at the end of our time. Let's just take a moment to make sure that you and everyone else, including me, have really been able to let go of any fears, any resistance, any blocks. Let's just invite the angels into our energetic system. So I love using heart breath. Heart breath is something they taught me quite a while ago. In through the nose, activating that psychic center, that midbrain area that allows us to have clear, confident conversations with them so that we don't have to spend our time in our energetic space wondering, oh, did they hear me? Oh, gosh, I hope I... Am I hearing them? We want to be able to access that area with calm confidence. So breathing in through the nose, allowing the energy of unconditional love to completely permeate that area. And then bringing it down through the chakra system. I call it the rainbow shoot. We allow that breath to travel down through the chakras. And as you're exhaling, imagine that you are exhaling from the back of the heart forward so that you are actively moving out any resistance, any fears, any lack thinking that may have crept in there. And please, no judgment. We live in a physical world. It looks like there is lack. It appears that there are things we can and cannot do. But we are now entering into the energetic 
where everything is energy and we can do anything. So don't get hard on yourself because you live in a physical body, but congratulate yourself for being wise enough to step into the unlimited expanse of the energetic and join with the energy of the divine. And now bringing that energy down from your higher self point. Right in through the crown, into the midbrain area. Forward to the third eye, just bathing yourself with the energy from the divine. Back to the nape of the neck, the ultimator. Forward to the throat and the thymus, heart, solar plexus, sacrum, root. And now allowing the energy to move down through the pranic tube, blessing the earth and everything in it and on it, and extending deep into the heart of Mother Earth. So that you know that you are grounded with unconditional love. That you are safe and supported. And now bringing that energy up after it has commingled with that beautiful energy of Mother God that allow I'm sorry, Mother Earth, that allows us to access her ability to regenerate, to transform, to make new that which has grown old and stale. Bring this new vibrant energy of transformative unconditional love back up through the chakra system. Beginning with the root, the sacrum, the solar plexus, upward to the heart, the thymus, the throat, Blessing the nape of the neck, the midbrain area, third eye, crown, up through the higher self point. Joining with the divine. Giving this energy to them as a gift of gratitude that they may send this energy of love and their wisdom, their ability to be in the space of abundance out to all universes, known and unknown, down upon the earth and everything in it and on it. But yet, keeping for you, for each one of you that is participating, the most sacred of this energy goes right down through the higher self point, directly down into, through the crown, into the heart. Spend a moment in this place of the heart. It is your connection to the divine. You are now experiencing the Christ consciousness, the energy of manifestation that dwells within all of us. Join that which you have brought into this life time with that which comes from the divine. Recognize that you are one. And allow this Christed energy, this energy of magnificence, this energy that is beyond beautiful, beyond powerful. Allow it to spread throughout your entire being. Recognize your oneness with the energetic realm. Recognize your magnificence and your brilliance. Honor the union that you have created with the divine, holding gratitude in your heart for all that has been given you. And now gently 
open the heart to receive even more. Breathing in deeply, allow the energy of unconditional love to come to you and through you and when you are full to expand outward and touch the lives of everyone around you. Just breathe deeply, being completely grounded and present in this moment. Feel the energy of unconditional love. Feel its power to create a miracle in your life. And to open your heart to receive. And now whenever you're ready, just come on back. I want to thank you, Andrea, for making that possible for all of us to share in that today. And thank you for sharing with us so that we always learn better when we have a real-life example. So I want to thank you so much for being willing to share with us. Well, thank you. You're so welcome. And for those of you who are listening and, and feel like, wow, I could really have used some extra help, please go to my website. It's MarshaMartinTheHeartHealer.com. Fingers crossed, I will still be able to honor the first person who signs up, who's listening, and uh, signs up for a 30-minute consultation with me, an Angel Heart Healing Breakthrough Consultation. My schedule is so jam-packed, we might have to go to a waiting list after that first person. So please, if this, if this really has helped you, and you feel that a 30-minute session would be honoring to you in some way, don't delay because you will be looking at a, a um, waiting list. But that's okay, too, because it just means that, that when I do have time, it will be the perfect time for you. But if it does feel good to your heart to go ahead and sign up, please do so. Otherwise, on my website, Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer, Marsha spelled M-A-R-C-I-A, lots and lots and lots of free resources, years worth of blogs, about a year of podcasts that you can actually access them all on my YouTube channel, Marsha Martin, the Heart Healer on YouTube. There is so much material there for you. Please, you don't have to feel like you're lost or alone. Also, if you feel that a class would be beneficial and you can't get in for a consultation, take the class. You will get tools and techniques like what we just did today. And your life is going to be magnificent as you reduce your resistance and allow the angels, the universe, the energetic realm to come in and partner with you more and more. So until next Sunday, I am sending you all my love. You've been listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio. Our goal is to remind you of how much you matter in the world and to let you know that we appreciate who you are in the world. You can check out who's on, when we're on, and who our guests are at angelheartradio.com. Everything is there. It's all just one click away. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools to help you in your life and your life experience. They are not intended, nor should they, be used to replace your medical or legal advice. The views expressed by hosts 
co-hosts, callers, guests and associates should not be construed as advice from Angel Heart Radio.